Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe Hendy, the Android Authority App Guy, and welcome back to Google Play Weekly. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about Google Hangouts, Final Fantasy VII, Amazon Instant Video, and a whole bunch of other stuff, so let's go. First up this week is a new rumor that Microsoft may be buying Minecraft. The Wall Street Journal reported that they had sources that said that Microsoft was in talks to buy Mojang, who is chiefly responsible for Minecraft. We're not entirely sure why, and we're not entirely sure it's true because it is a rumor and, you know, grain of salt. The price is reportedly $2 billion, and Mojang has had success with Microsoft in the past with its Xbox version of Minecraft, which is reportedly responsible for about one third of all of its revenue. If anything happens, we'll tell you about it. A new app study was posted late last week by App Annie that shows that handheld gaming may be circling the drain and it may be mobile gaming's fault. It's not happy news because I love my PSP, but the numbers don't lie. Mobile gaming has increased dramatically over the last year while handhelds are down about 25%. We know correlation does not equal causation, but we're definitely sure that mobile gaming is at least partially responsible because people carry their phones around way more often than their handhelds. It's not good news, but it's news. Next up, Square Enix has announced that Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy XIII is coming to Android. Kind of. It won't be in game format, but rather in streaming format. Square Enix is going to let people rent games for a nominal fee, and then they're free to play them using streaming. It's not overly expensive, and hey, at least these games are actually going to be playable on Android, but there are some bad things. It's only going to be available in Japan for a while, and you'll of course need an internet connection. After months of speculation and rumors, the Amazon Instant Video application is finally available for Android. The only really bad part is that you have to use the Amazon App Store in order to get it. Some may argue that another negative aspect is that it doesn't come with Chromecast support streaming, which only really matters if you own a Chromecast. I'm personally just happy that this is a thing that happened, and I'm sure the app will be updated and improved over time to include the things it doesn't have right now. Last up this week is some good news. Google Hangouts and Google Voice have finally been merged into one. The news will no doubt bring joy and happiness to pretty much everybody. Along with the integration comes a gigantic new feature which allows people to call each other for free over Hangouts. So if you've been hesitating on getting Hangouts, there's no real reason not to get it anymore. If you want to try it out, head to the written companion in the video description below and we'll have a link there to download the new APK. So who wants to see some trending applications? As usual, if you want to check any of these applications out, you can find the links in the written companion which is in the video description below. Clearly the first trending app this week is the Hangouts Dialer. In order to make phone calls on Google Hangouts, you also need this nifty little application. It's pretty much just a dialer application that's connected to your Google Hangouts account. It looks really nice, it's totally free, and if you use Google Hangouts, you should also have this application. Next up is Month the Calendar Widget. This application is a calendar widget and a bare bones calendar application that includes an incredible 70 themes across two widgets. They sell theme packs like SwiftKey does, so it's a system many people are already familiar with. It's a good looking widget and there are a lot of themes to match a lot of styles. It's free to try, so why not, right? Angry Birds Stella was released this last week, and if you're a fan of classic Angry Birds, this is going to make you happy. It's clearly aimed at a more feminine demographic, which isn't a bad thing at all, and it was actually kind of enjoyable to play, but again, only if you actually like Angry Birds. It's free to play, and that cute little pink bird is pretty awesome. The Score has updated their application for the upcoming football season. It now includes scoring play visuals, player comparison data, movement visualizations, and situational team splits, along with some performance improvements, small tweaks, and bug fixes. If you're looking for your next sports app to make it through the season, this is a really good one to try. Last up this week is the official Expedia app. It has undergone a huge UI change that puts it more in line with the Android design standard. It also includes some new features and a limited time offer that gives you $25 off your first hotel booking of $100 or more. It looks way nicer than it used to, and if you're planning a trip soon, it's worth checking this one out. If you want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest in Android news and reviews, I recommend going to AndroidAuthority.com, clicking on the little menu thingy, and heading to our app section where you'll see our latest news, reviews, our indie app of the day segment, and our meet the dev segment. Once again, I'm Joe Hindi, the Android Authority app guy. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you want to follow Android Authority, myself, or the rest of the video team, you can find our social media links in the video description below. If you're hanging out for a minute, we have a couple of awesome videos for you to watch right over there and in the video description below for you folks on mobile. Finally, don't forget to check out the written companion in the video description below because that's where you're going to find all of the download links and all of the source links. Thanks for watching again, everybody, and have a wonderful day.